Bok Mei, or White Eyebrow Kung Fu, was created by the Taoist monk Bok Mei, who was known for being born with white eyebrows. During the early part of the Qing Dynasty in China, Bok Mei started his training at the Shaolin Temple in Sungsung Mountain in northern China, along with four other masters, Hung Moi, Fang Do Duck, Ji Sim, and Miu Hing. Within the Silom or Shaolin Temple, Bok Mei learned methods of Chinese boxing that were patterned after the characteristics of the snake, crane, and dragon. After leaving the Silom Temple, the five masters went their separate ways. Bok Mei traveled to Naga Mei Mountain, where he spent 20 to 30 years refining his martial art. After observing and studying the spirit, behavior, and power in the movements of the tiger and the cougar, otherwise known as the leopard, he was able to develop and perfect his fighting techniques. Bok Mei's martial art became known as Naga Mei Silum, which was passed on to Guang Wei, the only heir to the system. It was Guang Wei who changed the name of the style to Bok Mei Kung Fu out of respect for his teacher. The style was then solely passed to Juk At Muan from Guang Wei, while both men were in a temple in Sichuan province in northern China. Juk At Muan traveled with his disciple Lin Song from northern China to southern China, eventually ending up in the Guanghao Temple in Canton. Chung Lai Chun began training in Bok Mei Kung Fu in the Guanghao Temple at the age of 24 after being introduced to Jut Pat Wan by Lin Song. As a child, Chung Lai Chun began learning Kung Fu for health improvement as well as a means of self-defense. By the age of 16, he was already a Sifu and well versed in three styles, Dragon, Li Ga, and Wanderer's style. In the five years that he was in Guanghao Temple, Chung Lai Chun learned the complete system of Bok Mei Kung Fu. He was the first layman to inherit the system. Lin Song, his training brother, did not have an heir or any students. He was instructed to teach the religion, not the martial arts. After remaining undefeated throughout his martial arts career, Grandmaster Chung Lai Chun was given the title, the Seven Southern States Champion. He went on to become the first person to publicly instruct this never before seen martial art throughout southern China. And at the peak of his martial arts livelihood, he owned 20 kung fu schools in Canton and instructed at notable institutions such as the Wang Po Military Academy. In 1949, Grandmaster Ching Lai Chun moved to Hong Kong due to the communist occupation of mainland China under Mao Zedong. While in Hong Kong, one of his last and youngest students was Man Kuang Fong, who trained extensively and learned the complete system of Bok Mei Kung Fu under the personal instruction of Grandmaster Chung Lai Chun. In the autumn of 1964, Chung Lai Chun died at the age of 84 in Hong Kong. Master Man Kuang Fong is the fifth generation inheritor of the system and remains as only one of a handful of instructors left in the world capable of teaching this system in its entirety. He was instructed by Chung Lai Chun to spread the art and knowledge of Bok Mei Kung Fu in America just as Chung Lai Chun did in southern China. Master Fong has been teaching privately in New York City for over 20 years. The form Sub Ji, originally called Sub Ji Ying Jiao Kao Na, is a foundational form in Bok Mei. Sub Ji translates to cross pattern in reference to the Chinese character Ten which is the pattern that the form follows.
标志，百味撇租，百味撞家。Bok Mei Kung Fu is classified as an internal and external style that emphasizes the combination of the science of combat along with the Taoist principles of using the qi or breath to maximize the generation of power from within the body and to maintain health. The purpose of an internal style is to harness qi and circulate it throughout the body and to strengthen the major internal organs such as the heart, kidneys, liver, lungs, and spleen. When the body is strengthened, its efficiency to perform increases. In reference to combat, power is not only defined through muscular strength, but also through the qi that circulates through the muscles, tendons, ligaments, internal organs, and bone marrow. In Bach Mei, the practitioner uses Geng Jak Ging, or sacred power, a type of explosive power that enables a technique to change quickly from a soft and relaxed movement into a powerful strike upon impact. Although a movement is soft and relaxed, it moves and shifts quite rapidly, which can look quite external or as if it's relying on muscular strength to the untrained observer. But in actuality, the energy is conserved until the moment of impact, reducing the stress on the muscles that would constantly have to work throughout a movement in most external styles and activities such as weight training. This also lessens the chance of premature exhaustion. Bach made techniques are executed between the short and mid-range distances. Hand movements are fast and powerful and kept close to the body. When one hand moves, the other reacts simultaneously. When one defends, the other attacks. Contrary to popular belief, the back does not hunch in Bach May. The back maintains proper spinal alignment, while the shoulders shift forward, creating the illusion of a hunched back. When the shoulders round themselves, the chest will naturally concave, creating what's known as a monkey chest, or hao hung in Bach Mei. This structure is favorable for the rising and sinking of the Dan Tian, the area approximately two inches below the navel, that is considered the main source of qi and power.
क्या ये साफ
The salute created by Bach Mei is distinct from all other bows in Chinese martial arts, not only in form but also in significance. The fist of the left hand represents China's five great lakes. The upright palm of the right hand with the thumb tucked represents China's four seas. In China, this bow means that we are one family. It begins and ends all Bach Mei forms, both fast and slow.
This form teaches the beginner in Bakme to use grabs, elbows, a variety of palm strikes and kicks in conjunction with a wide array of punches to simultaneously attack and defend against an opponent. But more importantly, the form teaches the beginner to use the entire body as one complete unit in motion, emphasizing speed, power, aggressiveness, and accuracy during the fast form, and emphasizes proper breathing coordinated with the correct body mechanics as a form of moving meditation during the slow form.